everyone, welcome back to East Coast Haunts. I'm MK. And I'm Sam. And welcome to part one of your two-part episode on Westfield, New Jersey. In this part, we're going to be talking about the Watcher House. Ooh, Do you I've know heard of- anything about it? I have heard of it. I have a very vague understanding, but I just know that a family moves into a house and gets weird, ominous letters. Yes, that's kind of like the very the spark notes version. Yes. yes. So, the Watcher House is six five seven Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey. Okay. And it's a different kind of haunting than we're used to here. It's got more true crime elements than it does supernatural occurrences, like your typical supernatural occurrences. There's no residual hauntings to be found in this house. But 657 Boulevard is possibly haunted by a different type of entity, and it could be caused by lingering bad energy from another Westfield native, but we'll go into that in part two. All right, all right. But the feelings that those events created hang over the town to this day, and residents don't like to talk about it. It's very much so swept under the rug. Ooh, okay. But we're kicking off spooky season. Happy September. Yay! With a real doozy of a case and our first ever listener interview who contacted us about this case and inspired this episode. It's really cool, guys. I'm excited. So if you guys have any suggestions for an episode or any personal experiences that you want to tell us about, Shoot us an email at east.coast.haunts at gmail.com. So, let's get into a little bit about Westfield, New Jersey. All right. It's located in Union County, New Jersey, and that's about 16 miles west of Manhattan. It's a popular living location because of its easy commute to New York City via train or highway. And it was formed on January 27, 1794, and incorporated as a township on February 21st, 1798. It was reincorporated as a town on March 14, 1903. Currently, the town has a population of just over 30,000 people. And I actually have a bit of a personal connection to Westfield. Do you? I lived about 30 minutes from Westfield growing up. I went to high school in the town over. And I have family members that live in Westfield, so I know this town like the back of my hand. Did you ever pass the Watcher House? I sure did. Oh! I know exactly where this house is. Wow, okay, that even that adds an extra layer of creepiness. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Westfield just from my personal experience. Okay, MK's like, POV. Yes, it's like the quintessential American town. Like, almost like you're stepping into, like, just a happy sitcom white picket take. fence yes exactly. wand division if you will exactly okay fun it's got beautiful affluent neighborhoods and like a gorgeous downtown with like restaurants boutiques like a picturesque train station yeah i mean my friends from high school and i would go in and get lunch in westfield oh okay it was the place to be it was and they have like everything you could ever think of they have like the cutest old-fashioned cinema Oh, I love that. It was, and just, like, so fun. One of those, like, charming small towns. Exactly. Okay. And it just feels safe. Mm -hmm. Like, you wouldn't think twice about walking to your car in the middle of the night. Okay. Alone. And that's saying something, right? Yeah, nowadays, definitely. Yeah. But the safety, like, the feeling of safety is confirmed by Residence and Niche.com. It's named in the top 30 safest cities to live in America. Wow, in the whole country. Yes. It's the 18th richest town in New Jersey. Okay. And it has an A-plus overall safety rating. Wow! Isn't okay. that crazy? Not many towns get that. Yeah. 64% of residents say there's no crime whatsoever, and the other 36% of residents say that they're not affected by what little crime does occur. Wow, okay. Assault and robbery numbers are 13 to 16 times less than the national average. And there is a quote from Niche.com saying that the residents feel that the police are, quote, very visible and very responsive. Wow. I'm about to pack up and move here. I mean, it's the 18th richest town. Oh, so yes. Yeah, so I guess I have to make a little more cash first. Maybe later on in life. <laughs> maybe if someone subscribed to our Patreon. I'm just kidding. To add. <laughs> <laughs> but the safety ratings actually make this an even scarier place for something like this to happen. Okay. Because the police, as responsive as they may be, 
they can't do anything because of the nature of the events that happened. They're also probably not very equipped to handling, like, an actual crime, No, right? yeah. exactly. So, but also, the fact that it's set in this, against, like, the backdrop of a perfect neighborhood, that's actually something that we learned about in film analysis, the Ooh. one, like, fun class that I took in college. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that when slasher films first, like, came onto the market, yeah. they were set, so, like, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, all of these were set in the suburbs because it has this underlying another layer of horror. Yeah. That's just like your safe haven, a place that you're it at. It couldn't happen here. Yeah. Is being invaded by these like horrible people. Okay. So. Getting analytical with it. It is, but that's kind of like things like this that happened in these neighborhoods. That's the inspiration for those kind of movies. Okay. You know? Then we're in for a ride. Oh, yes. <laughs> so let's get into it. So here's the event timeline. June 2014, the Broadus family purchases and prepares to move into their new home, 657 Boulevard in Westfield, New Jersey. Honestly, I did not know that it was this recent. Yeah. Like, this, so recent. Well, this, I, spoiler alert, it's a stalker that yeah. owns this house, was active as late as 2017. Okay. Jeez, okay, maybe I'm not moving to Westfield, actually. I would think twice. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this episode and then let me know. Okay. By all accounts, this was their dream home. Aww. It's right near the White's childhood home, and Westfield has like, an excellent school system, and it's just a great place to raise your kids. Mm -hmm. It's a gorgeous house. If you look it up on like Zillow, yeah. it's 3,900 square feet on like, just less than half an acre of land. Six bedrooms, four bathrooms, three floors with a basement. Wow. So it's... So four? It's pretty big, including yeah. The wow, okay. It's built in 1905, and it was purchased in 2014 for $1.3 million, and it's now estimated over $1.5 million. Really? The, but even no now? But no willing to pay. Uh, yeah. So listen. <laughs> so to introduce you to the family, the Broadduses... It's Derek and Maria Broadus and their three children. They have two daughters at the time of the events who were eight and five, and then one son who was ten. Derek had worked his way up to a senior vice president position at an insurance firm in Manhattan, and he had celebrated his 40th birthday by closing on the house on June 2nd. Okay. And again, this is like an ideal house for them. It's an easy commute into Manhattan. It's Maria's childhood town. What could possibly go wrong? And also, I've just looked at it on Zillow, and it is, like, gorgeous. It's it stunning. Is beautiful. We'll post pictures yeah. on Instagram. Actually, they're up right now, so. Yeah. Go check right now. But everything takes a turn for the worse on June 5th, when Derek is at the house doing some minor renovations and is painting before the family moves in. Okay. You know, to bleed all those, like, toxic okay. paints. He's just getting King. some work done around the house. Yeah. yeah. At around 10 p.m., he goes out to check the mail, and nestled in among the bills is a thick white envelope with, like, this clunky black handwriting. Okay. And it's addressed to the new owners. Okay. A and inside suspicious. is the first letter. Okay. And here's how it goes. Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched it in the 1960s. It's now my time. <laughs> Do you know the history of the house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. I see already that you have flooded 657 Boulevard with contractors so that you can destroy the house as it was supposed to be. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Bad move. <laughs> you don't want to make 657 Boulevard unhappy. You have children. I have seen them. So far, I think there are three that I've counted. Do you need to fill the house with the young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for the growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. I asked the woods to bring me your young blood, and it looks like they delivered. Who am I? 
There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard every day. Maybe I'm in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I am in one. Look at any of the windows in 657 Boulevard and at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Let the party begin. And signed in cursive, they signed it The Watcher. Oh my god. If you got this letter, what was your what would your first reaction be? My first well, first and foremost, I'm wondering the part about the kids is super creepy. Oh, it's so scary. It's almost he like after he, he's doing like a veiled threat of like kidnapping, right? It's it gets worse too. I had no idea. Let me just start by saying I had no idea that I knew that the letters were creepy. I thought they were maybe something like, ooh, I'm watching you, like yeah. better watch out. That like or like they were trying to get them to move out of the house, like, ooh, like this house belongs to me. I had no idea that it was in this much detail. This guy obviously like fancies himself a creative writer. Obviously. It's also weird that he refers to the house as like a living entity. Yeah, it's like in it's Monster like House, you know, personification to a whole nother level. Yes. Yeah, oh my god, babe, I forgot about Monster that, House. I was terrified of that movie. I also was terrified Remember of the that Remember la- the lady gets um buried in cement? That part yes. freaks me out so bad. The part that I couldn't watch is the one where it like eats the dog. Do oh, you remember that? Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Trigger warning for animal cruelty. Try um, The part of the note that I have a question about right away is he was saying the second coming of the house. Yes. What does that mean? It's, no one knows. Like, the second coming of Christ? Like, what is this? It's, again, personification. to the house as, like, just, like, almost like a person. But this is just an excerpt from the letter. The full letters have not been released online. Oh, this isn't? Oh, my it's God. It's not the full letter. But they did say that also in the letter, the watcher identified the family vehicle correctly as a Honda minivan. Okay. So, obviously, whoever it is. Is actually they're not just saying they're watching. They're not. It, they actually bluffing. are watching. It. They okay. and they identified the three kids. They know. They they've seen this family. The freakiest part was when he was like, "Look out! Look at all the windows that you can maybe see. I am." Yeah, one. that, that was scary. is scary. Yeah. Um. But the and also the name, the Watcher, that strikes fear into my heart. Yeah. Because if he had signed it like the Killer, I would be like, okay, like you're cringe. Like yeah, yeah but the that's Watcher, funny. the Watcher, freaky. That's scary. It's just mysterious enough. So, Derek receives this letter, and he's all by himself in the house, and he does what any rational person would do. He freaks the fuck out. Okay, okay, okay. First and foremost, he freaks freaks out. out. Runs around, turns off all the lights so that no one can see through the windows, and then he calls the police. Wow, so he called the police in the the pitch black? I would be too scared to turn the lights off. The officer arrives and reads the letter to which... He responds, what the fuck is this? And that's a direct quote from really? the police officer. Yes. Derek couldn't identify okay. any enemies, but ended up moving some construction equipment that was outside so the watcher couldn't use it to break in. Okay. Because at this point, they're thinking that it might be like a robber or yeah. someone that wants to, you know, ransack the house. Yeah. So he goes home to his family and immediately contacts the previous owner to see if they have any idea what the watcher meant by... Quote, the woods bringing him new blood. And the previous owners <laughs> are John and Andrea Woods. Okay. Oh. Andrew responds the following morning, which is June 6, 2014, and said that they had lived there for 23 years and only once received a letter a few days before they had moved out. Okay. And they threw it away thinking it was nothing. Like a prank. Yeah. A weird prank. And remembered that it was kind of like an odd letter. Okay. Which is an understatement. Yeah. That had mentioned the Watcher legacy, which are like the father and the grandfather, yeah. and it had thanked them for taking good care of the house all those years. Okay. So they thought it was kind of like a weird neighborhood farewell. Yeah. So Maria Broadus and the Woods go to the police, and Detective Leonard Lugo instructs them not to tell anyone about the letters because all the neighbors are now suspects. Okay. So the Broaduses are understandably freaked out. Derek cancels an upcoming business trip because he doesn't want to leave his family alone. And whenever the family was together at 657, Maria would keep the children close by and she would call them by their nicknames. Okay. So that I don't he wouldn't know get the what name. the children's names are. They're, okay. they're not online. Probably for the better. <laughs> yes. A general contractor who was doing work on the house notices a lawn sign had been ripped up and out of the ground overnight. Okay. And oddly enough, 
this wasn't enough to deter the family from welcoming neighbors into the home to see the renovation that they had made. Really? So they're bringing all of these neighbors in. I kind of think that this is their way of, like, scoping out the neighbors and being like, yes. is there any Yes, I wonder if the police told them to do that. They might have. So they could kind of get it. Because you know how they say, like, the killers, like, murderers show up at, like, the funerals? Yeah. It's like maybe, like, the the washer would show up to, like, yeah, pretend. Yeah, because then in, if he's going to write another letter, then he would have an idea of the interior yeah. of the house. I am shocked that they still moved in. That is, this is insane. Well, they haven't yet, actually. Okay. Oh, they haven't even moved in? They okay. haven't moved okay. in. Okay. <laughs> so then, one couple, while they're inside the house, the wife makes a comment about, quote, how nice it will be to have young blood in the neighborhood again. Coinc- it's just a coincidence. I think it might be a coincidence, yeah. too, because that's a white A woman like... did not write this letter. I don't think. Hold on. Okay, Before okay. Before you hold say on. that, um... But young blood is kind of like, that's a North Jersey thing to say. Yeah, I've heard it before. I'm not even from North Jersey. And yeah, I've it's heard like, it. that's, it, there's a very, like, like a dialect. Yeah, and it's not creepy. Like, I can see, like, where reading it in the context of the letter, it seems creepy, like, young blood. But uh, uh, people say it all the time, like, oh, young blood, like, yeah. f- like fresh faces. It's not it's, creepy. But it's different in that letter. Yes. It's, it's they're, he's kind of saying, like, the young blood is a running through the house right like, it's it almost sounds like he's talking about them as like blood sacrifices like Ew, that's like, yeah what it sounds like to me but anyway right. um after this like invitation for all their neighbors to come in uh-huh. june 18th 2014 maria checks the mail to find an identical envelope oh, addressed Lord. to Here the new owners and immediately calls the police okay so here's the second letter which i think this is one of Wait, I have a quick question. Did they check them for fingerprints or anything? Yes. Okay. All right, we'll get to that in a second. Welcome again to your new home at 657 Boulevard. The workers have been busy, and I have been watching you unload carfuls of your personal belongings. The dumpster is a nice touch. Have they found what is in the walls yet? In time, they will. I am pleased to know your names now and the name of the young blood you have brought to me. You certainly say their names often. Is your daughter the artist in the family? This line is weird because every time they brought the kids to the house, their daughter would go out on a porch that was only visible from like the side and the back of the house, so not from the street. Okay. And she would paint on an easel. Oh dear God. Okay. Creepy, right? I'm so freaked out. Six fifty seven Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement, or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. Will they sleep in the attic, or will you all sleep on the second floor? Who has the bedrooms facing the street? I'll know as soon as you move in. It will help me to know who is in which bedroom. Then I can plan better. All of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. Who am I? I am the watcher, and I have been in control of 657 Boulevard for the better part of two decades now. The Woods family turned it over to you. It was their time to move on and kindly sold it when I asked them to. I pass by many times a day. 657 Boulevard is my life, my job, my obsession. And now you are too, Broadus family. Welcome to the product of your greed. Greed is what brought the past three families to 657 Boulevard, and now it has brought you to me. Have a happy moving in day. You know I will be watching. Wow. I know. So That is terrifying. Again, this is only an excerpt. So he goes on to say the children's nicknames. Yeah. And not only that, but also their birth order. What is this? This is a million times worse than I really thought that this was. I don't think I ever heard, like, the actual letters. Oh, it's freaky. So Maria and Derek didn't tell the kids about this because they didn't want to freak them out. Yeah. Which, understandably, good parenting. I don't think I would be able to move my kids in here. Oh, I wouldn't. Or myself. (laughs) I wouldn't either. Um, but there is one thing to note here. Okay. So he misspelled their last name. Okay. 
their last name is spelled B R O A D D U S. Okay. And he spelled it B R A D D U S. Okay. So he missed the O. So that to me says that he is listening in on these conversations and he's not checking their mail. I'm saying oh. he. This could be any gender. Okay. I'm just referring it to as a, as like a masculine presence. So that to me says that he has to be within earshot and also is able to see this easel. But so how? it's not from the street. I don't understand how. Well, Derek has a lot of theories. Okay. Well, also, I have a quick thing. I'm sure that you'll get into this, but, like, I feel like it's obvious that, like, they were saying there were so many, like, people working on the house. Like, yeah. it would be so easy for someone to, yeah, for someone to see the inside of the house, how many rooms there are. You know? Yes. It is weird because they don't really ever consider, like, the contractors. Really? Because that was, like, my first thought. It's weird. Maybe they know something I don't. They, I, I, they have, like, three main suspects for this. And none of them really make sense. So I don't know if they, like, didn't do their, but they did do their due diligence. But if it's not a contractor, then obviously this guy doesn't have a job. Because how else would he be able to, like, hang around the house all day? Which I'm assuming it seems like he is watching it all day. Yeah. Weird. Or at least, like, a couple of times a day. Yeah. Like, check it on the way to work, check it on the way back from work. It's also interesting like, that he lied in that letter and said, like, oh, like, they, the last family left because I asked them to. Yeah. Like, when that's just not true. No, it's not. Okay. But um, there is a weird, like, note about that later. When, okay. When the first letter was addressed to, like, the woods and then yeah. also the Bronsels. Okay. But... The most unnerving part about that letter is, have they found what's in the walls yes! yet? Yes! What was that? A home inspector went through the walls, and they used ground-penetrating radar, and they found nothing but, like, a lack of insulation. It reminds me of, like, the boy, where there's, like, the guy, li- spoiler alert, there's the guy living in the walls. Like, I'd be scared that this guy was somehow, like, in the walls or something. Oh or the part about the basement was also terrifying. Yes, yeah. that's scary, too. So... Okay. Nothing comes of this letter again. So on July 28th, 2014, the house receives the third letter. And this is after Maria and Derek have stopped coming to the house and stopped bringing the kids to the house because... So they don't live here still? No, they still haven't moved in. And it's been like over... It's been almost two months at this point, right? Yeah. Where have you gone to? 657 Boulevard is missing you. The house is crying from all of the pain it's going through. You've changed it and made it so fancy. You are stealing its history. It cries for the past and what used to be in the time when I roamed its halls. The 1960s were a good time for 657 Boulevard when I ran from room to room imagining the life with the rich occupants there. The house was full of life and young blood. Then it got old and so did my father, but he kept watching until the day he died. And now I watch and wait for the day when the young blood will be mine again. 657 is turning me on. Oh! Oh, no. That's not what that's Oh, my God. I was going to say. 657 Boulevard is turning on me. (laughs) That was so funny. (laughs) Tell us how you really feel, sir. (laughs) 657 Boulevard is turning on me. It is coming after me. I don't understand why. What spell did you cast on it? It used to be my friend, and now it is my enemy. I am in charge of 657 Boulevard. It is not in charge of me. I will fend off its bad things and wait for it to become good again. It will not punish me. I will rise again. I will be patient and wait for this to pass and for you to bring the young blood back to me. 657 Boulevard needs young blood. It needs you. Come back. Let the young blood play like I once did. Let the young blood sleep in 657 Boulevard. Stop changing it and let it alone. So, my initial thought is, in the other two letters, he was sort of strongly suggesting that they leave. But in this one, he seems to be like, why haven't you moved in yet? Sad face. I think he's start. He's starting to get more desperate. Okay. And it's becoming, like, more unhinged, too. He obviously wants them to interact. Yeah. Like, very badly. So, I think the wording in this letter possibly indicates a previous owner. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm said, assuming, I right? The halls. As a as a kid, I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. Um, but here's where 
that note about the dating on the letter comes in. The first letter was postmarked June 4th, and that's before the house sale was made public. Okay. So it's someone with insider information because there was not a for sale sign in the front yard. The sale was not public and it's postmarked June 4th. Okay. And the postmark, they can't, there's no way to like fudge with like the, okay. All the letters were processed in Kearney, which is the North Jersey Letter Processing Center. Okay. So all of these, and then also the kid's name and the easel location named in the letter, they all indicate a neighbor or a person near. Okay. So the police tried to get involved, but their hands are really tied here. Okay. There's nothing they can do. There's no specific or physical threats, and they can't get a restraining order against someone whose identity they don't know. Okay, yeah. So the investigation kind of stalled. Okay, but why can't they go in and look at every single person that's ever lived there? You know what I mean? That, I don't know why. They I mean, maybe that. they did, and it didn't lead to anything. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it seems like... The watcher is trying to make it so obvious that he lived there at one point. Or at least he was there. Or it's like Maybe a red herring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but yeah. But, like, he was there at some point or another. I don't so, understand the obsession. Sorry. Continue. I don't either. But, like, it, it could be some sort of, like, mental illness, which I say that for a certain reason. Okay. Maria and Derek, especially, they become obsessed with finding the watcher themselves, and rightfully so, he threatened their children, and are they really willing to stake their lives on the probability that something is not going to happen? I mean, yeah, especially the fact that this is, like, their dream house, and the only thing that's keeping them away from it is this guy. It's like, if you can lock him up, then they'd be fine. They just spent $1.3 million on this house. Yeah. They, it's time to fight back a little (laughs) bit. So they took matters into their own hands, and they launched a personal investigation. Derek purchased and installed video cameras and made maps of houses that are within earshot of 657. Okay. Smart. Um, he hired a private investigator and contacted an uh, old high school acquaintance who was formerly in the FBI. And just as an interesting side note, she was the agent that served as an inspiration for Clarice Starling in Silence of the Lambs. No way! Isn't that cool? That's a really cool connection. Movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. That's awesome. He also hired Robert Lenahan who was an FBI agent, who um, was a linguist and analyzed the letters. Okay. So there's several ticks in the letters that point to an older or an elderly author. Okay. So they double spacing after periods. <laughs> That's such an old person it thing. It is such an old person That's thing. a classic boomer move. <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember a one time when I was like a kid, it was either my mom or grandma yeah. would like type I would dictate something, they would type it out, and I'd have to go back and delete all the At all the periods? After the it was period. definitely grandma. <laughs> it was definitely grandma. <laughs> it's, the letters are addressed to M slash M Broadus, which is a very old-fashioned way of addressing yeah. things, like Mr. and Mrs. Um, the salutations included the weather forecast for that day. Okay. And despite the extreme anger, there's no profanity in any of the letters. Okay, now I'm convinced that it's an older man, too. Because yeah. Because th- that... Those all do point to someone who's above 55, I would There's say. There's also a note in some of the letters that they dislike the quote-unquote new money invading Westfield. Okay. So they're like, there's one point where he's like, are you part of the new like wave from Hoboken that's coming in? Okay. It's just like... It sounds like an older man. man. It yeah. sounds like an older man. It sounds like a grumpy old man that has nothing else to do. Yeah. Creepy old man. Yes. Um, but... Regardless, there's no digital footprint or physical fingerprints. Really? And at this point, investigators are just unsure if these letters are clues, threats, or, like, rambling. Yeah. Some sort of weird prank. Yeah. But these two FBI agents do come up with a few theories. They thought it was perhaps a former housekeeper or maybe the child of one. Okay, that that would make sense. It makes sense. Someone who lost the bidding war on a house because the Broadduses were in a bidding war oh. with a few other people, and it ended up going way above the asking price. Okay. And then one of the buyers who originally had the house had to drop out due to a medical diagnosis, and that's when the Broadduses got the house. Oh wow! Okay, wow. That would be the most petty thing ever. I but know. I mean, <laughs> or it was someone who just couldn't afford the house and was jealous. Okay, and thought that maybe if they threatened them they would put it up for sale and they'd get it at a discount 
well or not because it's more worth more isn't it getting sold for more now than it was back well then? the asking price okay was but no one's gonna over 1. okay 5. but with the lack of physical evidence the investigation stalled again Ugh, okay and as you can imagine this started to take a toll on the broadest family as I said before, they didn't tell the kids why they hadn't moved in yet, so they're hiding this secret from their kids. And the kids are, what are the ages? Three, five, and what? Ten to, at, the oldest is ten, yeah, so it's eight, like, and five. Oh, ten, eight, yeah, so I, at least the ten-year-old and the eight-year-old are old enough to be like, what is going on? Yeah. So, they began to suffer from depression, PTSD, Maria had, like, reoccurring nightmares. Yeah, don't blame so her. So, she went to just, like, a physical checkup. Yeah. And the doctor came in the room and was like, how are you? And she just burst into tears, so we sent her to therapy. Good. And so she was ended up getting some help. But Good. then as kind of a last-ditch effort, they had, a ple- uh, they had a priest come and bless the house. Okay. So the Broadduses had to sell their old home, and they moved in with Maria's parents while maintaining the mortgage and tax payments on system. And you know that the mortgage and tax payments in New Jersey are no They're joke. They're unreal. Aren't they like the highest in the country yeah, or one in, of them. in the East Coast or something? It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, six months after the purchase of the house, the Broadduses put up 657 for sale. Wow. So they never officially moved in? Never moved in. Oh, God. But this they is painful. They listed it for more than what they bought it for due to the renovations that they had done on the right. house. Right. But rumors grew about why they didn't move in, and they got some offers that were well below the asking price, and they just weren't willing to be that in the red on this okay. house, so they didn't sell. But, but they, they should have just sold it, because now we're in 2022 it. and it's still on the market. Well, actually, there's been some recent developments. Oh. So, they didn't want to disclose the letters to anyone who wasn't serious about buying this house. Okay. But, Because at this starting... point, sorry, at no, this point, ahead. no one knew about it. No, no okay. one, it wasn't a public, public knowledge thing yet. because okay. remember the investigators told them not to tell anyone. Okay, got it. So, June 2nd, 2015, the Broadduses are losing money left and right yeah. on this house. So, they sue the Woods for not disclosing the letter. Yeah, I think that's fair. I feel bad for the Woods because they kind of just got messed up in this mess. If they, they truly didn't hear anything about it until that letter that they got right before they moved out, then I feel bad for them too. But, but if they know more, um, I can't really blame the Broadduses for, like, wanting to find someone to blame, you know? Yeah, me either. No, me either. But they just kind of wanted a quiet settlement because they still don't want the kids to know. Yeah. They don't, if, they, if I was a kid and I figured out that, like, oh I had my been God. threatened in a letter. Talk no, about PTSD. Scary, yeah. But a reporter got a hold of the, like, statement. I don't know what the legal jargon is. Okay. But the, like, statement that the Woods were suing, or that the Broadduses were suing the Woods. Okay. And the story of 657 went viral. Because there's, like, a an, an couple of excerpts from the letters oh, in there. Oh, man, that's not right. Oh, so, God, okay. As you can imagine, the public response was monumental. Yeah. So the people of Westfield were freaked out. And it became sort of like a local legend. Like, kids would dare each other to walk up to it on Halloween. Oh, like, man, that's scary. Yeah. And people were, like, scared to walk past it. And then some civilians took it into their own hands to hold stakeouts in front of the okay, like, yeah, streets of this to... house. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously now the Broadduses are never going to find a buyer for this house, so it went off the market. Okay. Because every time someone was like, screw this, screw this guy, I'm yeah. going to get a house for a discount. Yeah. And then they read the letters and they were like, I'm out of here. Yeah. You could be... The least superstitious person. Because that's the thing. It's like it's not technically, like you said, like haunted in a way. It's it's not haunted haunted. It's, but it's these letters are haunting. Yes, exactly. It's scary as hell. That's the perfect way to put it. Like this scares me more than any spirit in the yes, Lizzie Borden house. Because you know that you're being me. actively watched by a person. My biggest fear is looking out a window at night and seeing a face looking oh don't even talk about this it's i only i I, it's like a common fear yeah i have it too i actually like if i'm home alone at night i have to shut all my blinds i could never yeah no i think that started from my fear with the jersey devil and i was scared that i was gonna see him looking back in and and now slowly anyone I mean, it's it's a legit fear. It's, I mean, the, the Jersey <laughs> Devil part, maybe not so much. But, maybe not. But, but 
having a random dude outside watching you? Yes. No, it's scary as hell. So anyway, the house goes off the market, but in spring of 2016, the house went back on the market. That's optimistic of them. I know. So again, all the buyers were spooked by the letters. Yeah. So they come up with this brilliant plan that they're going to sell the land to a developer who's going to split the property into two different plots and then build a different house on each of them and sell it for two different houses and the developer was going to pay them $1 million for the land. Okay, so they're so, going to they're gonna knock down the original house? Yes. Ooh, so that's going to make him mad. They're taking a $300,000 bath on this house. Okay. But at this point, they're like, it's, it's worth it. Screw it. Screw yeah. Screw it. The lots were 67.4 feet and 67.6 feet wide. The Westfield mandate is 70 feet. So... so so they applied for a variance, okay, and it was denied. Oh man, that's so brutal. They denied it in January of 2017 for aesthetic reasons because all the neighbors went to the town council meeting and was like, "Well, if we have these narrow plots, it's gonna mess up the neighborhood. If we don't take a stand on the boulevard, where are we gonna take a stand?" Okay, come people. On. I would okay. I wonder if the neighbors were secretly scared that the watcher was gonna like. Move on to one of their houses. Yeah, or something like that. So, the thing that gets crazy about this is that the Westfield board approved a variance in 2018 for a smaller plot. Okay, so obviously, are they like, is this like a conspiracy that the whole Against town the is in? Yes. I guess, I don't know. Like, but then Maria came out with a statement because she's feeling betrayed by her hometown. Yeah. And she said, this is my town. I grew up here. I came back. I chose to raise my kids here. You know what we've been through. You had the ability two and a half years into a nightmare to make it a little bit better, and you decided that this house is worth more than we are. Wow. So Jeez. then on top of that, yeah, they applied for relief from the $100,000 that they had already paid in property taxes, and they were denied. Oh, this is horrible. Why are, Why does everyone have it for, out I for these people? I don't know what it is about Westfield. Clicky. That, it's, like, clicky, but there's also that, like, like I'm say- I was saying in the introduction, a little bit of, like, a weird feeling. Yeah, very weird energy. It's how are you going to prioritize the way your neighborhood looks over a young couple and their ch- three children? They're three little children. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. I have nothing to say, but I, I don't know. So, well, actually, now comes, like, a little bit of a happier part. Finally. A renter agreed to rent 657 Boulevard. Okay. And it was an older couple with two, with, it was an older couple with grown kids and two huge dogs. Okay. So. So, No young blood here. (laughs) No young blood. But there's a clause in the agreement that they could back out in the case of another letter. Okay. Fair enough. That was nice of them. Watcher broke his silence two weeks later. Really? So how many years has it been since the last letter? Um... Three? Two. Two? Okay. I think two. Wow, yeah. okay. Um, and the renter received a letter addressed to the Broadus family. So obviously, the watcher has been actively watching. Yes. Okay. And as soon as this renter moves in, that's when they break the silence. Okay. And here's the fourth letter. The heading is the weather forecast. Don't forget. Classic. Violent winds and bitter cold. Ooh. To the vile and spiteful Derek and his wench of a wife, Maria. Oh! <laughs> it's getting real personal. What a way to start off this letter. Violent wench. You wonder who the watcher is? Turn around, idiots. Maybe you even spoke to me, one of the so-called neighbors who has no idea who the watcher could be. Or maybe you do know and are too scared to tell anyone. Good move. I walked by the news trucks when they took over my neighborhood and mocked me. I watched as you watched from the dark house in an attempt to find me. Telescopes and binoculars are wonderful inventions. 657 Boulevard survived your attempted assault and stood strong with its army of supporters barricading its gates. My soldiers of the boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the Watcher. Maybe a car accident. Maybe a fire. 
Maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away, but makes you fell sick day after day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones die suddenly. Planes and cars and bicycles crash. Bones break. You are despised by the house and the watcher mourns. Oh. Okay. So. This makes me think it's not someone who like lost out on a house because no one is that desperate yeah to get this a house it's been two years they would have gotten over it by now and found somewhere else so So, this letter is dated february 13th which is the day after the broadus's deposition against the woods okay and actually shockingly the renters agree to stay as long as derek installs some cameras okay Something that I didn't mention previously was in Christmas of 2016, so this is just a few months prior. Okay. Families who had been outspoken against the Broadduses during the development hearing received threatening handwritten letters signed Friends of the Broadduses. Hmm. But I'm sure it was from the Watcher, right? Is that what you're implying? Well, you'll see. Okay. So, the suspects. Let's get into the suspects. Okay. Yeah, I'm very... I, my mind is blown. Like I, I said, know. there's three main ones. Okay. Okay. So the first suspect came into suspicion at 11 p.m. during a stakeout with detector, I'm going to butcher this last name, Shambliss from the Westfield PD and his partner who were parked outside 657 on a stakeout. Okay. And they see a car stop in front of 657 and it stops long enough for them to be like, that was weird. Maybe we should run this place. Okay. And they trace it back to a young woman who lives nearby. A young woman? Yes. So, she says that her boyfriend has been borrowing her car, and he lives on the same block as the Broadduses. Okay. And when they, like, kind of question her a little bit more about him, she said that he's really into violent video games, and he plays as a character called The Watcher. Okay, this is very bizarre. It's weird. Very it's a little bizarre. Compelling. So, but so they reach out to him, and he agreed to two separate interviews, but he fails to show up for either of them. And there's not enough evidence for them to indict him, so he was never questioned. Dang! Did they ever say his name? No. Okay. He sounds but like a pretty good suspect. He does, but they also said that the police officer didn't take down the name of the character so he's just remembering this conversation okay so it could have been the watcher he remembers it as being the watcher i remember the character in the video game being named yes. the watcher okay and i feel like that's the thing though that that if you're looking for someone named the watcher and she's like oh he plays as the watcher that would but i wonder how they even got set up a conversation yeah i wonder too. i feel like if they had actually said the watcher he would have been positive that that was the name yeah, of the, of the character So, the second suspect, which I personally think is the most compelling, is a neighbor named Michael Langford and the Langford family. Okay. So, they were brought into suspicion by another neighbor at a barbecue who had (laughs) mentioned the family to Derek and was kind of like, yeah, they're really weird, but they're harmless. Okay. And Michael was described as, like, a Boo Radley type. Okay. Like, from... Uh, kill a, to, to kill, kill a mockingbird. Okay. So very reclusive, kind of like everyone in the neighborhood is like Ooh, scared he's of weird. him. Yeah. yeah, is a little bit scared of him, and there's a reason why they're scared <laughs> of him. Um, but he lived in the house next to six fifty seven. He was, and it was owned by his nine year old mother, and he lived with his six year old siblings in this house. How many siblings? I don't know. Okay. At least two others. Okay. I know he had a brother. And he had lived there since the 1960s, which is when the watcher in his letter mentioned that the father had watched over the house. Okay. And in another watcher letter, he says that he's been watching the house for the better part of two decades, and Michael's father had died 12 years ago. So maybe that's the correlation there. Yes. From that house, they are both within earshot and have a direct view of the easel that was on the porch. Okay, so there's, right now, for me, there's, like, no doubt in my mind that it was him. Me like, either. duh. 
he was diagnosed as schizophrenic as a young kid. Okay. So that's why I'm saying it could have been mental illness right. that these letters were the result of. But the reason that he kind of like wasn't taken very seriously as a suspect is because neighbors vouched for him and they were like, I don't think he could have written more letters. Like, I don't think he was capable of it. That's the only reason, though? And also the fact that they had lived peacefully there since 1961. I don't know. And also another fact that's going to come in a second. But I do want to point out, there are some typos in these letters. Yeah. Like, they used the wrong two. They spell things wrong. Okay. They forget, like, and or or. Okay. It's, there's a lot of, like, you know how they put the sick? Yes. Notation is- that's, like, if something's spelled wrong, but they don't want people to think that they spelled it wrong. Oh, I never knew what, they, what, what that was, but that makes sense. Okay. Sick is when it's spelled wrong in the original citation. but And the person want... wants to be like, I swear I'm not dumb. Exactly. Yeah, okay. That's exactly what it's used for. So there's a lot of those in these letters. Okay. Um, so the Browses hear this and they're like, bingo, our problems, problems are solved. Yeah. So they want to file a civil lawsuit. But at the same time, the police have finally are able to pull some DNA off the letter. Okay. And they note that it belongs to a female. Well, but he lived with his siblings who could be girls, and he also lived with his Well, he has a sister, Abby Langford. Ah, okay. Who's a real estate agent, and they kind of theorized that they were like, oh, maybe she was upset at losing a sale and, like, her shot at commission Mm -hmm. right next door. Um, So she worked at a Lord & Taylor, which I actually have... That's where I got my first communion dress is the Lauren Taylor that she worked at. No way. The exact yeah, one. The exact one. Um, and security guard worked with the PD to, like, grab a water bottle that she would used while she was on Ooh, shift. Oh, okay. So they pulled the DNA off that water bottle and it wasn't a match. But, I mean, so many people could have touched that envelope. That's what I'm saying. Or the If note. it was processed through the mail. Like, that could have been touched are, by any number of people. Why are we... Unless it was off the letter and not off the envelope. Well, even then, I don't know. Even then, I don't really buy this, because what if it was, like, the paper manufacturer? Or someone could have been in Staples, like, flipping through a notebook for some reason and, like, then put it back. I don't know. I mean, I feel like there are so many reasons. So, that's what you and I agree on. Yeah. These police officers ruled out the entire Langford family as suspects with no explanation, and they just told the Broadduses that they were, like, we know that you're that they're your number one suspect, but they're not it. And so the Broadduses were like, "I don't believe that. I think the town is conspiring against this I family." I do too. Maybe since they were like, maybe since this the Langfords had been such a um, a staple for so long. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Something's weird. So the third suspect, which I think is kind of interesting, okay, more so than credible is the Broaddus family themselves. People oh. think that they bit off more than they can chew oh. and used the letters as a ploy to get out of their contract. Okay. So the main pieces of evidence that people cite in this theory is that there was a huge jump in house prices and size for the Broaddus family over the years. So they went from a $315,000 house to a seven hundred seventy thousand dollar house, to a one point three million dollar yeah. house, basically doubling. Well, yeah, but Derek had also moved up into like the senior vice president yeah. position. That's not a- abnormal. But then also, again, when they asked Derek, he had a very like eloquent response. Okay. As to like why this happened, his response was, "It's America." Is that it? That's it. Yeah. I mean... I mean, I don't think it's... I see what he's saying there, but, like... Uh, but, I mean, if you can afford a $1.3 million... It doesn't necessarily mean that you have $1.3 million in the bank. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, I don't think it's that crazy to be, like... I think that if they had truly bit off more than they could chew, and they had written these notes themselves, which would be something else... Yeah. If they had truly done that, I think that after it hadn't worked... For a year or two, they would have given up on it. I agree. Right? So, but another thing that people point to is they kept renovating after they decided not to move in. Oh, that is a little bit weird. It's a little weird. But they also 
were thinking that they could sell it. They could sell it from here. Especially because before it went into the public, they were probably like, okay, we can finish the renovations get it looking really good, and then make some money off of it. Yeah, but I almost wonder, like, you know how the Broadduses were going to sue the Woods? Yeah. Like, they would have just gotten sued right back, you know? Yeah. Because if this next family moved in, and then they were the subject of these watching letters... It would have just been a never-ending cycle. Well, I guess they could... I guess, well... They could disclose... Yeah, it's like... Don't you have to disclose if you think your house is haunted or if there were, like, murders that happened there? Yes, I think so. I think it depends state by state, but I think most places do. Interesting. Yeah. Because I feel like this kind of falls under that category. Yeah, this one's, like, yeah, being stalked, basically. Like, if the house itself is being stalked. That's, like, but this is such a unique case. I know. It hasn't, it's probably why it became, like, a huge deal that it is, is because, like, it's not even, like, they're, they're going after the family necessarily. They started just by going after the by wanting to protect the house so bad, and the yeah. family was, like, collateral damage or something. Yeah. So, another, like, thought behind the Broadus family wanting to do this on themselves yeah. is they wanted to create, like, a media circus and sell the rights to a movie studio. Oh, okay. So Lifetime actually made a movie about the Watcher house, and it's called The Watcher. Okay. But they didn't pay Derek and Maria for the rights, so Derek and Maria sent them a cease and desist. Okay, yeah. But Lifetime argued back that it's a totally different story because the couple is biracial in the movie, and Derek and Maria are both white, and the letters are not signed The Watcher in the movie, but they're signed The Raven. I have nothing to say. This couple is just getting screwed over left and right. Like, I don't think that they did this. I'm going to come right out so and say I don't think so either. It. This is so mean. I don't. This is so mean. Also, freaking Lifetime. Are you kidding me? Lifetime? Yeah, you can't go back to, your, to give them like a couple thousand bucks. Go back to your Christmas movies like The Princess Switch. Stay in your lane. Yes. Like, what? The Raven. That is so weird. <laughs> I know. But the fact that they were like, no, no, no. You guys are both white and this couple is biracial. That is so. Come what are they thinking? On. Are you kidding These, me? This poor family. I know. I think I'd move out of New Jersey. I would too, but Maria was, Derek wanted to, but Maria was like kind of dead set on Westfield. I don't know why. Couldn't be after me. this. Yeah. I'd be scared that after I moved into a new house, like sold the watcher house, whatever, moved somewhere else in Westfield, like I'm just people, people would find out and then the stalker's just going to come over there. Yeah. And like after they did sell, uh, spoiler alert, like, they sell the house. The house is no longer in their possession. Okay. They still are, like, in the area. Oh, my gosh, no. The kids get teased at school. Yeah. Maria has to come face-to-face with the head of, like, the zoning board. Okay. The person that decided to not give her the variance. She has spin class with them. Every really? Week. Yes. That'll give you some motivation to spit it out. I know. So then, wait, listen to this, though. This was another, like, key point of evidence. Uh Those friend of the Broadus' letter, Derek admitted that he wrote those. Okay, I, I, it's not that bad. I mean, he claimed that they're the only anonymous letters that he ever sent. And I believe that. I don't even think that that's that crazy that he wrote it. No, if, if I was going through that and then in front of my face a bunch of, bunch of people decided that they're going to pick the aesthetic of the neighborhood over my family's safety, a strongly worded letter is not the only form of retaliation. Yeah. That, I, that is not. Yeah, honestly, yeah, he took it easy on them, honestly. I, yeah. Yeah, I think that's absolute. I don't think that indicates that it was them at I all. I think he's justified in writing those letters. I agree with you, absolutely. But, and then also, two things point against this as a theory. Just, okay. like, two main things. The psychological torment, which was determined to be, like, extremely valid. Okay. Like, that is, it, they weren't faking it. Okay. And another family on the block received a Watcher letter at the same time as the first letter to the Broadduses. Oh. And they just threw it out. They didn't think okay. anything of it. But if the Broadduses are going to sell their story for, like, movie rights... Uh-huh. Why would they send another letter to someone else on that block who could then also Absolutely. sell their rights? So, I, what was the gist of the other letter? Do you know? It was the same okay. kind of, like... About 
But was it about the brought up this house, or was it about this? I don't know. Okay, because they threw the letter out. But it was the same sort of like watcher legacy, Ah. like almost like the woods. Okay. So that being said, we're actually gonna jump into an interview that I had with our listener. They're a Westfield local, and they requested to remain anonymous, but they were the ones that suggested this case to us, and they suggested a couple questions via email, and they actually mentioned a theory that we're going to discuss in part two. Ooh. Like the events that happened in Westfield that we think kind of could have tainted this town. Right. So I started off, and I said, first off, thank you so much for listening and being on our podcast. I understand that you're very familiar with the Westfield area. Can you explain to us a little bit about the atmosphere of the town? Does it feel safe? Have you ever experienced anything weird in Westfield? And they said, The town always felt safe to me growing up in the next town over. It's an upscale area with a beautiful downtown, but also always had an uneasy feeling because of the murders that happened there. We always felt a little bit weird when we drove past the place where they happened. Also, just a fun little fact... The creator of the Adams family was from Westfield and based the house slash town that the Adams family lived in off of Westfield. No so that way. is kind of weird. That's interesting. But it's weird that this like picture perfect suburban neighborhood inspired like a quote unquote like creepy, spooky yeah, yeah. comic or show. Yeah. Whatever it is. They mentioned in their original email that they've met the Broadus family. So I said, you said you've met the Broadus family in the past. Do you have any comments on the family? And they said, I've had very little interaction with them and have just made polite conversation in passing, but they seem like a very normal family. Very nice and nothing out of the ordinary that I can tell. Okay. So. Just like a regular family. They're not doing it for the lifetime rights. (laughs) No. I think that, I really think that they're the victims here. Absolutely. I agree. So I said, some people have theorized that the Broadus family concocted the watcher as a way to get out of moving into a house that they couldn't afford. Do you think there's any truth to that theory? Do you think it's possible that they could have bitten off more than they could chew? If not, who do you think is responsible for the watcher letters? And they said, honestly, I'm not sure who wrote the letters. It's kind of a taboo subject that people in Westfield don't love to talk about. But from what I've gathered, a lot of the residents have a feeling that the family could have possibly had some involvement with the letters. Hope this helps. Love the podcast, girls. Thank you to the listener. Yeah. That was very nice. Thank you very much. It's also, it's nice to have, like, a primary source. It is. It makes me feel like a, like a detective. Or like, a little bit of, like, a... I mean, the person, this person has seen them face-to-face. Like, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's also interesting to hear that a lot of people in the town itself actually think that they might have been involved. I know, but it's, like, it's weird that they don't like to talk about it, too. It's, like, kind of like a black mark on yeah. this, on this town's otherwise, well, not perfect record. Yeah, which, as we'll see. Yeah, Sam's going to get more into the murders that that the listener alluded to in their interview. But to wrap this up, Derek's current theory is that there's 10 possible houses that the Watcher could have been in. Okay. That are both within sight of the easel, the security cameras, and within earshot of the house. Okay. As of currently, there's been no letters since that last letter in 2017. There are new owners, so okay. someone actually bought the Watcher house, and Netflix bought the rights to the story, so they're making a series about it. Okay. So, we don't know if the Watcher will ever surface again. Also, thanks to our listener, they sent in a picture of the Watcher house. <gasps> and what's even freakier about it is that you can see a face in the upstairs window stop it i did stop. Serious. If you zoom in there's something that looks like a face but does someone live in there currently right now this picture they said was taken back when the house was vacant stop it i have chills i'm so freaked out right now this is this might be Isn't the scary freaky? this is like this i think the scariest one that we've covered so far it's definitely in my one that's gonna make you think i mean oh my god i mean part of me feels like it has to have been the neighbor michael i kind of agree right? with you i think that the female dna is not enough to rule him out no definitely not there are so many other reasons that there could be female dna on there i don't know but wow. the last theory is that the watcher house and the 
Westfield, the town, is haunted by the spirit of one of Westfield's most notorious and evil residents. And that is a discussion that we're going to leave for part two. Gotta come back and see who it is. It'll be dropping later on this week. But until then, we hope that you very much enjoyed our part one episode on Westfield, New Jersey, talking about 657 Boulevard. And we want to thank everyone who has been subscribing to our Patreon and checking out our website, going on our social media. You guys rock. And thank you for your feedback. Don't forget to leave a review wherever you're listening to this. And we will see you guys very, very soon. Bye. Bye.